What is up, gamers? Staxwell's back at it again today with another Market Watch. Uh, for those who've seen my Market Watch, what was it, yesterday or the day before? Uh, I only really was able to talk about like the news because so many cards had so much movement. I kind of had to exclusively cover what was moving. Uh, that's not going to be the case this Market Watch. This Market Watch is going to be almost entirely speculation. What cards I think are going to go up or down moving into the, for, moving into the format post-Dromai. Um, so yeah, it's kind of going to be like the basis of this whole market watch, right? So I don't want to waste any more time. Let's just go ahead and jump straight into it here. Um, the overarching idea though, is that Droma is going to be gone. And if Droma is gone, what heroes are going to be good? I imagine there's going to be a lot of like people who, you know, their deck loses to Droma. And now that Droma is gone, they're going to assume that their deck is really good, right? So think Arachne, Uzi decimator axe dory any kind of d-react pile deck in general right maybe the d-react pile bravo riptide kasai um so many decks like this that people are just gonna be like well you know this deck used to lose to droma and droma is gone so now my deck must be good right so if that's like the level one what everyone's thinking going into the droma list format uh let's try and get one step ahead of that and try and uh, brainstorm some good pickups on the market i do think decimator great axe is going to be a good one kind of incidentally uh, i do think this because the hatchet story that's very popular right now will probably wind up citing one copy of this just against all of these d-rack pile decks cheapest copy on the market is currently 1321 um, but i think a sleeper moving into the next format is going to be teclo vasen so I think all of the Tekla Vossen cards are going to be good pickups, uh, particularly these extended art War Machine-like cards. Uh, War Machine itself, I think, is a great pickup. It's only $20 right now. And if you think about it, like, what does Tekla Vossen lose to? It's like Kano and Droma. If Droma is gone, it's just going to be Kano. And um, all of these other D-React pile decks and these slower Uzi, Arachne, kind of Fatigue, Bravo, like these kind of decks are going to be too slow <laughs> to be able to kill Teklovasen before he transforms and gets four Evos and starts hitting you with War Machines and Terminator tanks every turn. Uh, so this is kind of like the control deck to beat control decks, right? It's like the, if everyone's going to go slow, I'll just go slowest and have the biggest payoff at the end. And uh, yeah, I think it's going to be a big winner, like moving into the initial uh, the initial meta post Dromai. So all of honestly, all of the uh, all of the Teclo Vossen cards, I think, are all good pickups. I think we have a couple more in this market watch specifically. But I think War Machine was like one of the best ones at only twenty dollars. I think it's a steal. Show no mercy. Uh, if everything is a fatigue pile or Kano, then you know reinar seems like a fantastic pick i also want to caveat all of this with like if everything's a fatigue pile like just imagine like uzis and d-react pile warriors and stuff like that ko is going to be very bad moving into all of that right because if you think about our current meta it's like ko beats dromai dromai beats all of these fatigue piles and the fatigue piles beat ko it's like a it's a triangle right so if you take away the dromai side of the triangle then how does ko come out as any kind of winner in that triangle it seems like he's going to be miserable moving into the next format uh, but i think reiner honestly could take a spot in this triangle being able to just run over any kind of direct pile deck and having a good matchup to kano uh this seems like an like like a front runner to me moving into the uh following weeks of the pro quest season and uh, Show No Mercy is only a dollar. Every Reiner deck's gonna be playing three of it, uh, so I think it's a fantastic pickup. And the Rainbow Foils are like $2, uh, so I think it's definitely worth having a set, even if you're not a Reinar player. Uh, I think the card's are definitely gonna go up here. Uh, Tiger Stripe Shuko, this is one I just haven't talked about in a little while. Has nothing to do with like the overarching theme, <laughs> but I didn't mention it last time. Cheapest Rainbow Foil on the market is $63. The cheapest Coldy on the market is $75. And then it jumps up to 84. Uh, so if you're going to get it, I recommend just getting the cold foil. But obviously this is getting bought up because of the new Ninja coming out. Passing Mirage is one I didn't get to talk about either. Cheapest copy on the market is $40. Uh, a lot of excitement for the new Blusionist coming out in the next set. So this pr price hike makes a lot of sense. Energy Potion, the promo from the Pro Tour is finally on TCG Player. Cheapest copy is $130. I'll be keeping a close eye on this one. I think it's kind of interesting. It was selling and trading for such a low number at the venue itself. I'm curious to see. I think it's going to go up. I think it's just going to take a little while, and I'm curious to see how long it takes. Surgical Extraction, the Rainbow Foil, is at $50 for the cheapest copy. Kind of insane. Uh, yeah, just a lot of yeah uh new hype for the new assassin obviously all of these new cards are going to be revolving around the blue cards surgical extraction being 
one of the most powerful blues in the deck. Uh, it makes a lot of sense that that one's going up. Uh, the the non foil though hasn't really moved too much. That's why I only talk about the rainbow foil here. Uh, Dorinthia herself, the rainbow foil is only sixty nine seventy dollars. Um, I think it's a good pickup because I still think Dorinthia is going to have a lot of success in the new format. I think while she did have a lot of game into Dromai, it wasn't like a particularly good matchup. And then uh, you know as we talked about earlier with the decimator plan, I think she still is going to be fine into the next format. Um, without seeing the rest of the set for Miss Vale, it's kind of hard to call that. And she has so little living legend points that I think $70, if you're going to be like a drill my guy for the next, you know, year, you could feasibly do that. She's not going to rotate that soon. And then $70 to foil out your hero for the next year. seems like a good investment to me. Swing big. I think this one, while it is down a little bit right now, um, I do think it's actually not the best pickup at the moment. And I seriously... I don't know what it is. I just have a strong feeling that this is going to be reprinted in the KO Armory deck or whatever. Uh, so if you haven't picked up your Swing Bigs, I would just wait until that KO Armory deck list comes out further and we're able to see all of the reprints that come in it. Uh, but I just have a feeling that Swing Bigs going to be in it. So if I didn't have it, I would hold off on this a little bit longer if you could, if you weren't planning on playing any like major events in the immediate future. From an air tank, we kind of alluded to this earlier when we talked about War Machine, uh, but the cheapest like regular non-foil Terminator tank on the market is like five bucks. And no one plays this hero, by the way, and this hero is considered bad right now, by the way. So just imagine what's going to happen to this price uh, when he is a good hero or when he is a popular hero. Um, you know, this card's obviously going to skyrocket as soon as he becomes meta viable. Don't wait for that day. Just get yourself a set of Terminator take if the me if the hero interests you at all. Um, just go ahead, get the deck ready to play with so you're not stuck paying that, uh, that, that inflated price tag. Enix form the extended art. Call this a hot take, but I was like thinking about they're not just going to like let Phi be bad. I think that they, he's like one of the last remnants of Fab 1.0 Uprising was. And with uh, Icelander and Dromai both gone, I think they're going to be looking at Phi and wondering how can we LL him quicker? <laughs> uh, obviously, they were kind of afraid to print Draconic Synergies uh, in sets previously because obviously Dromai could take advantage of them as well. We've seen that with like Flame Call Awakening, searching the Phoenix Flame, and then, you know, all of that sh shenanigans. So I think they were a little wary to print just generically draconic support uh, but now Dromai is gone they could do that so they could print more phoenix flame support and i think that they kind of want to lean into that with Phi. this is totally a vibe i this is just like a speculation and a vibe and i think that they're going to give uh Phi more phoenix flame specifically more phoenix flame support and if they do then phoenix form could be very good depending on like what the new support is i think it's only four dollars i think it's a good investment you know get yourself like what twelve dollars for a playset, and if this card becomes good it's an extended art majestic immediately twenty dollars right that's what happens with every other extended art majestic in the game uh the only difference with phoenix form is that it's currently bad and it's only currently bad because like there's just not good consistent ways to get another phoenix flame right well, you have the first phoenix flame cool the second one you could get off flame call awakening cool you just don't have like easy third phoenix flame if that makes sense i mean yeah you could pop your links <laughs> I don't know. I think we're going to get another Phoenix Flame support card. This could totally, this is like my tinfoil hat call of the of the market watch, but for $12, I don't think it's that big of an investment. Uh, Spreading Plague, I think this one's a little bit obvious, but with the new Assassin, they're going to want to be blocking your attacks because they don't want them to hit, because they don't want them to ban, they don't want you to banish cards off the top of their deck because the Assassin could play cards from Banish Zone, so they're going to be blocking a lot. If they're blocking a lot, then Spreading Plague is going to be uh, pretty crucial. Uh, pretty good card. Uh, yeah, this one, like I said, it's kind of obvious. Cheapest copy on the market is $4 as well. Let's see what the rainbow foils are. Actually, and check that before the market watch started. Uh, it's about the same, like six, seven bucks. But there's not that many. There's only like 10 left on the market. Uh, yeah, I think it'll be a good card. Probably like a three of in the sideboard, honestly. I'll leave no witnesses. Uh, I just didn't talk about this card. I kind of like mentioned it offhand. I said like, oh yeah, the rainbow foil, leave no witnesses is going up as well. But I didn't like really see it. I don't know if this just happened within the last couple of days or what, but the cheapest rainbow foil is $30 for leave no witnesses at the moment. Makes a lot of sense. Uh, Codex into leave no witnesses is probably just the best one card play in the entire game. Um, so yeah, leave no witnesses. Getting some respect finally. I remember this being like a $10 foil for since Out Outsiders came out. Uh, so it's good to finally see it come back a little bit. I do think it's going to drop as like the market replenishes this kind of stuff. So if you don't have it, don't uh, pay this inflated price tag. Give it a couple 
weeks and uh, i'm sure it's going to come back down a little bit but keep an eye on it when it does come back down you're definitely going to want it again one of the best one card plays in the game uh, even without the codex like just putting this on the table is a fantastic one card play as well zero for four blocks three like you really can't ask more out of a card in flesh and blood this is like one of my favorite cards and the art is obviously sick as well Mordred Tide, this goes back into like if everyone's going to be playing control, you want to be more controlling than everyone else and who does that better than Viscerai, right? Uh, if everyone's a D-React pile and you're a Viscerai making a pile of rune chance while you do it, uh, you're going to be beating out all of the other D-React piles quite well and if Teclovasen is also good then you know Viscerai has the added uh, arcane damage that Teclovasen can't block out. Uh, so, you know, while they're playing like D-React Dory, you're just blocking, making rear chance, making rear chance, making rear chance, and they're not going to be able to stop it all. I think uh, Viscerai could be a sleeper once Dromai is gone. Uh, weirdly enough, if the market, if the, not the market, if the meta slows down that much. Moving on, Arcanite Skullcap. There's a bunch up here for like $18, $19, particularly if you're a new player. This card is an absolute steal. But even if you're not a new player and you have like balance and crown, I think that this card is like still very good um, in heroes that start with less than 40 life. This obviously has the three block and then uh, the arcane barrier three, I think will be relevant one day once we get more wizards and more uh, rune blades and more arcane damage dealing uh, classes in the game, arcane damage dealing heroes. Uh, Skullcap is going to be a big player moving forward. And uh, for $20, you know, it's uh, used to be one of the best legendaries in the game. Uh, I still think it has niche uses and it's only $20. And it's a fantastic alternative if you don't have $100 to pay for one of the other legendary headpieces. Singularity, uh, all the same things I said about Terminator Tank, I'll say about Singularity. And Singularity, if you look at this little graph here, kind of satisfying. Uh, but it's at an all time low. Cheapest copy on the market is $33. Uh, I just, I have a terrible feeling that Teclobosan is going to be a big player next format. Moonblood Incantation, the extended art rainbow foil. For those who have been around since Dust Till Dawn or prior, uh, prior to Vincent's release, this card spiked up to like $20 or $30. I'm sure I could find it if I go back in my market watches a little bit. Um, but it's at only $7 right now. And everything I just said about Viscerai uh, could also in a way apply to Vincent. Uh, Viscerai also plays Runeblood Incantation. Vincent will play Runeblood Incantation. We'll get a new Rune Blade at some point down the line. And, uh, you know, it's a good control card. It just makes Rune Chance. If everyone's just blocking, you make a lot of Rune Chance. You know, throw 50 Rune Chance at your opponent. I think it's a good card. I think it's a good steal. And uh, it's only like seven, eight bucks. Quite a few copies on the market. Um, I think it's a good pick up there. Uh, runic reclamation this one kind of makes a lot of sense if rune blades come back into the meta and then there's also like enigma running around and the new prism running around heroes that um you need poppers for and you need a way to destroy auras wow that's all built into one with run runic reclamation for 17 cents for a majestic you can't go too wrong uh yeah it's it's, it's like a dollar let's be honest here after shipping Still a fantastic pickup. Any Runeblade player should definitely have a play set of these, even if you don't plan on playing it in the immediate future. Channel Mount Heroic. This is kind of a weak call, but this is like the only thing we have. Uh, Crown of Seeds being banned kind of implies that they are cooking up a new Earth Hero, and they're sick of trying to balance around Crown of Seeds. If they're cooking up a new Earth Hero, well, what Earth cards can we pick up? It's just Channel Mount Heroic and uh, Amulet of Earth Cold Foil. Uh, there's not a whole lot of Earth cards. There's like Earth earth ice cards but who knows if there's going to be a hero that could play that so there's not that many earth cards to go off of right and there's no guarantee that something like pulse of eisenloth will be playable in anything there's no guarantee that they're going to do dual dual class or dual element heroes again right there might not be an earth ice hero that comes out uh the heroes might just be like earth is just an earth hero and there's just an ice hero it's totally possible and um that's why I would only spec into the earth cards because there's just no guarantees. They could add another element into the mix, which would mess up the whole triangle, right? Um, but yeah, for only 20 cents, a dollar 50 cents, it's worth having a play set of these just in case it winds up being played. Uh, while you're at it, you might as well pick up like all of the other exclusively earth majestics, right? Like Tome of Harvest is only 17 cents, as you see down there. Uh, Amulet of Earth Cold Foil is only a dollar 75, could wind up being played. And then uh, the Extended Art Burgeoning. Uh, the blue one is only 25 cents. With Crown of Seeds being gone, these are like the only Earth cards that could go up. And to get a play set of all of these Earth cards, it would cost you less than $10. Uh, so I think it's well worth it. Um, 
yeah not a whole lot more to say outside of that it is a huge spec because like who knows if fusing will be in a thing in the new set if it's not then amulet of earth isn't particularly good who knows if the new hero is going to want channel mount what if it's like an earth wizard right then this card makes no sense but it's only a dollar so <laughs> i think it's like worth because it's so cheap it's worth specking into if the price spikes then yeah forget it but at the current price tag i think it's well worth it celestial kimono i think this card's trash to be honest with you like now that we know what the new hero does unless her new weapon does something with ward has like some kind of ward synergy i don't fully get it like if you put celestial kimono and diadem of the dream state and stuff play go play a game with that equipment suite right now you're gonna see it's really bad <laughs> so if it's like i just i'm just not a believer personally i was kind of cool with it before we seen the new hero power now that we've seen enigma's hero power i'm not a big fan of this card i'm not specking into it personally uh, i have a couple celestial kimonos but i'm not not specking into the marvel uh, i don't have any of the marvels and uh, yeah that's why i just don't think the card's particularly good play a couple games with it and you'll see exactly what i'm talking about uh last card i wanted to talk about was storm striders because if everyone is um you know playing like a super controlly kind of game if it's a super controlling metagame with a lot of d-reacts uh then kano seems like a very powerful option as well and uh storm Shire is like the only money card in kano really and not only that but obviously we're going to get a new wizard at some point in the future and when we do then obviously storm striders will be an instant include in that deck uh kind of no matter how it plays it's going to play storm striders i imagine they would have to print a giga powerful card to uh, get rid of this if you're picking this up or anything else we talked about in the market watch please do so using my tcg player affiliate the link in the description below it costs you absolutely nothing and uh, a small percentage of that goes back to supporting the channel that's all i got for you guys today thank you so much for watching don't forget to like comment rate subscribe help the algorithm help me out just a little bit later gamers